Let's have a presentation by Conley Dr. Indrajit Singh, co-founder of India Blockchain Forum on Cyber Threat Landscape and Challenges in India. A huge round of applause for him. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, AP, AC uh, Networks, and uh, MPS, DC, uh, Mr. Nikunj, Mr. Ajit, uh, Abhijit Agarwal, for having me here. It's a really a pleasure on a very pertinent topic of national security and cloud security. And why it's so very important is everybody is affected by it, whether it's a small kid in a house or whether it's a family or the old parents who are there. They're all affected by it. And on a personal front, whether you're having a mobile phone or you're having your own official data, you're still grappling with the data part of it. So if you can just put up the slides. So while he puts up the slide, you know, just one question I just want to ask and cloud security we have been all talking of. Where is your data? How many of you are aware of your data? All of you have got a mobile phone. All of you got your know, official data which you're handling. Where is your data? Anyone? How many of you know about data? The raise of hands. Data center. data center? Okay. How many of you don't know where is your data? Cloud. Where is your data? It's not in your data centers. It's in cloud somewhere. And which cloud? In India? Abroad? US? Singapore? Where is it? It's a, it's a vague question. If you can just put up the slides. Yeah. So it's a vague question. And I tell you, this is what is the cloud security. Everybody talks about cloud security. But the data security in the cloud is a nightmare. Because you're pushing the data to the edge. And configuring the data at the edge is not easy. Right? Ransomware is in the cloud. They're all happening now. OK? We are seeing already the kind of frauds or the kind of crimes which are there all happening in cloud. So that is where we are seeing the whole lot of data challenge which is coming up. Bring up the slide. Pen drive? Aya nahi usme. I know the slides by heart. So we are living in a very environment where data is a problem. We have got an existential threat today because we don't know what's going to happen next. And when it comes to the kind of attacks which are happening, and as a take the point, case in point, India, we're already seeing AIMS attack, which was there on 23rd of November last year, just two days next to what we are talking now. And then we have seen Oil India attack, where we paid 56 crores as ransomware. Thereafter, you know, the recorded future came up with a report that there are power grids on the threat, there are ports on the threat with the APT-41. That's where we are seeing things are happening right now. And off late, just last one week, there was a report by Danish, the Denmark. And they said that there are 23 organizations of power which have been simultaneously attacked by the hackers since May onwards. And what were they hacking on? Your vulnerabilities, your firewalls. The Xyl firewall, they were using it, it had a vulnerability and they exploited it. And it was a series of attacks, not just one attack, thereafter attack after attack. And they were not able to bring it down, but they had the attacks which went up. And this is what I was saying, we really know where our, we don't know where our data is. Right? And we have to be very careful about it. And when do the cyber attacks happen? While we are working now, which day the cyber attack will happen? The most prominent probability of cyber attacks. Your weekends, your holidays, your festival time. That's the time when you're going to have all the cyber attacks. Cyber breaches are very common which are happening. Right? So just I'll just cover it up, I'll just move ahead. New thing on the prowl, the DDoS attacks. Right? And first, major DDoS attacks which you saw that was on 7th of April this year by a cyber terrorist group called Anonymous Sudan, right? And they targeted five airports, two hospitals, two corporates in one go from three o'clock till five o'clock. Objectives, they all best know it. And thereafter, they are continuously hitting 
you know, our targets. And while we were having the G20 summit, they were targeting, targeting the organizations with the DDoS attack. DDoS attack, for the people who are not knowing it, is choking the complete network till the time, you know, you're not able to access it. So that's what. And the, see the audacity of these criminals. They went onto the Telegram group. It's only 14,000 that time, now it's more than 2 lakhs subscriber. They went on to ask which target you want to do it, whether a hospital or airports. That's the kind of environment we are in. And so you see, at that point in time, when I took this snapshot, there were 2,763 votes for what to do. That's where the things are happening. And while, you know, uh, Israel Hamas war is already on, see the interesting part. All the hackers all across the world have grouped as pro Hamas and pro Israel, right? And they are, you know, targeting either critical infrastructure or their networks or you know, damaging other networks, or TVs for that matter, or the displays, the, the overhead displays which you see, they are capturing that. They are capturing the sensor, hacking that. This is how the environment is. So next war, if it happens, and this is the case of Israel, the global conflict, it will happen same for India as well, right? Like when it comes to India, we have you know, Pakistanis, Israel, uh, Indonesian, uh, Bangladesh is all grouping up to do the DDoS attacks, right? So this is how the scenario is really emerging. How safe are we? It's a, only the point or the time will tell. Every 11 seconds there is a cyber attack. While we are talking, there is a cyber attack. And whenever there's a cyber attack, it's not that you know, we have a backup, we are going to be safe, we have got everything. There's a dwell time or there's a, you know, the average downtime which is there of 22 days. That means your networks are not going to function till then, till the time you get all the you know, data back, back on your feet, back on the operations. And two cases, case in point, they were asking for, Boeing was being hacked very recently. Boeing, one of the major uh, you know, airline, airport, aircraft manufacturers. Two of the companies they hacked, they asked for the, uh, you know, the ransom to the tumor of $50 million, $70 million. So it's not a small amount what they're asking for, right? And what's the window of opportunity? This is where the game is. We all of us will say, you know, we are very safe. We have got everything in place. But what's the window of opportunity for you to detect an attack and react? And anybody, any takers on this? What's the window of opportunity to react before you get to know that you are being hacked? Any takers? If no takers, it's just 10 minutes. So you have to be ready for, for that 10 minutes to know that you have been attacked. Else, it's a time will tell. He will get into, do a little movement, you know, get into your network, exfiltrate the data, and, you know, ask for ransomware or whatever, you know, he wants to do. Most of us and most of the IT professionals who are there, see on the left-hand side, you will say, I've got everything. I've got policies in place. I've got DLPs in place. I've got firewalls in place. And by the way, I should tell you, IPS, IDS, firewalls. Firewalls are just mere piece of software code. Can be hacked. Don't go by a misnomer that it is the only security which can save you. Right? That's where the thought process is. You have everything, you know, network security, physical security, endpoint security. But still you have the cyber attacks. Why? The challenges are... Now, the technologies are changed. The attack surface is really changing. Attacks are getting more focused, right? You've got botnets, you've got APT attacks. They are very, very focused. They know what to do. APT-41, very commonly known, uh, spoken about APT. Signature-based, antivirus, we've been talking of all this file, but antivirus is no more the best, uh, you know, security because signature-based securities don't work. You have to have machine learning-based you know, security. Your insider attacks, don't you know, move away from that. Bank of Baroda, 7,200 branches, the kind of attack which is there, it's fraud basically. It's not an attack, it's a fraud. It's a very recent one. Insider threats, you cannot take it out. And what you have to have is the real sense of security. You ask any CISO, do you have a sense of security? Do you know everything in your network? You know how many shadow databases you have? You know how many shadow IT you have? You'll say, yes, no, yes, I'm safe. But the answer is, 
we really lack a sense of security, a situation awareness. On a single pane of glass, do I have the whole network in front of me? What's happening in front of me? That's where we have to really go on to. This is what, what I put across is the cybersecurity, which we've been seeing from 1995 to 2010, was at a speed of sound, like firewalls, your antivirus, your signature-based solutions. And 2010 to 2025 is now at the speed of light. When I say the speed of light, we are getting to the era of AI and machine learning. We are talking about cyber tools, which are more adaptive, we're self-organizing tools, right? That's what we talk of predictive uh, uh, analytics and all those stuff, right? And to overcome this, we have the legislative you know, uh, requirements in India. We already have the six uh, critical infrastructures which have been nominated. In case of any cyber attack, they are under Section 70 of IT Act. They need to be protected. That includes the power and energy, and we have Mr. M. K. P. Singh. He'll be talking of that. Uh, we have finance, the BFSI, of course. Uh, so power, BFSI, I find the very well organized because I come from the industry as well, where they're actually getting into a lot of policies in place, the frameworks in place to protect their networks. Your telecom, your transport, your aviation, airports. How many times have you thought going on a T3 or a Bhopal airport and all whole of your airport is logged? None of your, you know, uh, that conveyor belt works, your uh, uh, aero bridge works. Possible, not possible. Possible? It's all possible today. They all are the critical infrastructure. The next Cyber threats are not just, or the cyber war is not just on your bridges. It's going to be on your critical infrastructure. Think of a Jhelum Dam, the, you open the gates and you flood the complete city altogether. Right? So that's where it is. And I put health. Health was never thought of as a critical infrastructure. It was only being thought of after the AIMS attack. We have the CISO here. He'll throw more light on that. But that's where now the health is a very critical area, which is uh, as a part of the critical infrastructure of India. One primary requirement of reporting the cyber attacks within six hours, which came up last year, Search India, is a, one of the very important you know, uh, milestones for the country where we have to inform. But most of us don't know what to inform, what logs to give. We are still you know, far away from understanding what requirements are there. So that awareness, that logs, what has to be given, that solutions, what have to be implemented, has to be known. Now, what is happening is, and this is where we all come from. We always think we are very secure, right? We have all the kind of security, antivirus, email security, endpoint security, intrusion detection, firewalls, server security, you know, access point security, access control, everything we got it. And we think all the threats are outside and we are all safe inside, right? And the, protected, the data is protected within the perimeter. And this is what is a misnomer today. What is happening is your data and the digital assets are now both lying beyond the perimeters. When I say beyond perimeters, they are either in the cloud or outside. So you have mobile applications, every one of you have. You are transacting mobile. Your web applications, you are transacting. Your in network infrastructure, your SaaS based applications which are there, third party services. The third party services is very important. We never been talking of attacks, third party attacks ever. But third party attacks are the most important today. It's called the supply chain attack also. That means attacker doesn't need to get into your network directly onto your network itself. He can get in from your partner network to attack you. Solar winds, which happened on 11th of December, 2021 was one of the case point. 17,000 uh, equipment or devices were affected by that, solar winds. That's where it is. How many times you thought your VIP user is to be protected? His social media account is to be protected. We never thought of that. Have you ever thought of protecting your MD, your chairman? We never thought of it, but it's important today. Have you thought of your you know, brand reputation of your organization as part of your cybersecurity? That's very important. This is how your digital assets are all lying outside, right? This is where we have to now think, not that all the threats are outside and you're protected within the perimeter, you have to look outward in and see what's happening in the network. And that's what I was saying, that you should have a clear pane of glass showing you what's happening in that. And how can you do that? 
you should have a threat intelligence, you should have threat hunting, you should have continuous attacks of its management. We have an audit which we do only six months or a yearly, but attacks can happen anytime. They don't have a time of six months or a year, or a VAPT, a frequency of six months or a year. So now we have to have something like a continuous auditing, continuous VAPT, right? Those are the kind of scenario or the, uh, the mindset we have to change. We always thought the security just put a guard outside the, the, uh, this uh, uh, hall and you know, uh, you're safe, right? But the old school thought doesn't work, right? And what you practically require is, if you're going to put each of the security guard in the castle, you need to get protected. That's how you need to work it out. And why I'm saying so is, there was a Gartner study which came up in 2019 called Kata. And most of you who are in IT, what we do? We analyze the risk and the threats and vulnerabilities and we define the policies for firewalls or all the IPS ideas, right? But does the risk, policy, uh, risk remain the same? The threats remain the same? The vulnerability remain the same? The answer is big no. So you should have a very continuous adaptive risk and trust assessment. That's where we have to really look in for. That's how the way forward has to be, right? I'll just skip the slide. Okay, AI we have been talking of, and this is a real big game changer. And with the AI, we have a defensive AI, we are, we're going to defend, and the next scenario is going to be AI versus AI. Whether it's your war, cyber war, AI versus AI, or even in your normal organizations, it's going to be AI versus AI. Either you're going to have a malware detection, your SOC operations, your IPS IDS, your anti-spams, all based on your machine learning, your vulnerability management on machine learning, your data classification. Which one you feel secure, your words or PDF, whenever you want to send a, you know, attachment out of your office? Which one do you feel secure? Word or PDF? Or you want to download? Word or PDF? How many are for PDF? How many for Word? No one for Word. Why for PDF? It's secure. The answer is a big no. PDF are the favorite of hackers today because none of your, you know, all these um, softwares which are there actually read the content in the PDF, right? And that's how we can lace the malware in the PDF and send it to you, right? So that's how we can, you know, inject it. Threat intelligence is very important, which is again on the machine learning. Coming on to the offensive side of it, because the attackers are also very active when you look at it. Your malware creation, machine learning based, your smart spam bots, your spear phishing, we always talk about spear phishing, they are using the AI. Your adversary AI, and that's what we've been talking of, the deep fake, which was already in social media quite a bit, that's also an offensive AI. Your conditional attacks are a part of the AI. Your classifying of victims is a part of the AI. We don't stop here. Chat GPT, it's already in, we are everybody talking of the good part of Chat GPT, different applications, but we're already seeing the warm GPT coming in, okay, which can create warms. There are fraud GPT which are there, they can create the kind of a, a phishing emails. Earlier we had a problem of, you know, phishing emails, like there was a grammatical error. Now with the GPT, the fraud GPTs and all, those grammatical errors are gone. Any person who wants to uh, write a phishing mail, it will be grammatically correct. So that's how they are going to be used. There are, there are again the, the wolf GPT, there are kind of on a service, the malwares which are there in the dark web on a monthly basis, you can buy that. And this is the kind of landscape, I don't want to scare you, uh, you know, with the chat GPT landscape, but it's a threat landscape, the cyber security landscape, the privacy, your threats are enormous. That's where we have to actually think of when we're, whenever we're using the chat GPT incorporated, right? And before I close, this is the vision 2023 to 40, how we are going forward. And it is all integrated security IoT, which we think of. And that's where we have the managed integration of IoT. You have cyber physical systems under the cyber security officer. Then is the scenario 2025, which we are coming up, is adaptive security. And we are transitioning to global real-time AI and ML, machine learning based cyber applications. That, that, that's what we are doing. And what we anticipate 
2040 is going to be neural security, which is an enterprise-wide development of real-time AI-based cyber defenses. That's how we're going way forward. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure talking to you all. It was scary. Uh, as presented by Dr. Uh, Indrajit Singh. But I remember uh, what Mr. Uh, Amit Sharma said in the inaugural, he let's see the challenges and opportunities. If we have these threats, we can also overcome these threats again uh, by critical application of mind and technology. Thank you so much, Dr. Indrajit. Mm -hmm.